It would be nice if I had the microphone in front of me. That would be <laughs> the best way to do it. Um, Sabaho, everybody. Sabaho, and welcome back to the show. This is the Android Bay. Uh, today is episode 119 on, well, I was going to say February. It's May 21st. That could be wrong because that's how I do it. No, um, May 21st, 2022. Uh, it is, uh, I think, maybe one more Sunday, one more Saturday. We'll have one more show here on, in, in May. Um, but we're very quickly moving on. And I will say this. If it seems I am a little bit lower than I usually am, and that's because I am, um, I have a new chair that I'm testing. And uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit lower, even at the highest level um, than what I typically am. So I need to configure the setup a little bit uh, as I'm testing it for the next week or so before I put out the video for it. So it's a brand new chair, uh, checking it out, new office chair, not gaming, but uh, definitely a more comfortable uh, seating, uh, sitting type of chair. Um, I see we have a few people here that are already with us. Uh, we have uh, Eljosa, Greg is it kicking it with us, Finn Jacobs in there. Hey, man, you made it early this time. Um, and of course, uh, we have Davin Davis in there, TNC, and Cher uh, Chemi Torres as well, and Donald Nazino kicking it with us early in the morning um, on this. Well, I I'm assuming it's still somewhat morning uh, where you guys are. Um, it's, this week's actually been an interesting week. Uh, for me on, on YouTube, it's been a very slow week. I've had a lot of um, a lot of things going on during the day, while well, day job stuff uh, that unfortunately took me away from being able to make a lot of content. There was a couple of things I wanted to cover, but I didn't get a chance to. Um, I also had to return the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Unfortunately, my time with it has ended. And uh, it's one of those things you kind of have to... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just saw Davin Davis. We're still running the non-beta ROM on it. Uh, no Cyanogen mod and uh, no lineage yet. Uh, but hopefully we'll get root very soon. Um, although I'm I'm a little bit I'm still a little bit weary about having beta software installed on a car, especially when you know potential things could kind of go. Um, but yeah, no, this week has been kind of a little bit slow. I put out a couple of videos and both pretty much just covered uh, basically buds. So we had the the link buds from Sony, and of course we had the OnePlus buds. Now, oh sorry, the OnePlus Nord buds. These are new uh, buds from Nord uh, for the U.S. market, and they're going to be available very soon. Uh, the biggest thing about them is the fact that they're actually 40 bucks. They're literally hitting a very, very, very entry level price point, And they're still kind of still pretty decent experience. No ANC, uh, but they have a pretty decent um, noise isolation based on the construction and the way they're put. And um, overall, sound performance is actually pretty good at about 40 bucks. It's not bad. Uh, and it'll work with almost um, any device that uses uh, you know, either Android or iOS. You can use them with the Hey Melody app. Or if you're using a OnePlus app, it just works straight up in the uh, in the Bluetooth settings. You don't even have to install any apps. You just connect them and start using them. So really, really nice. Um, okay, so let's start real quick. We have Finn. We had a quick question. It's like, TK, I have a quick question. I have a question for you. Um, do you have to reset your tick watch when you pair when you pair it to a new phone? I have to do this with my Samsung Watch 4, and it's annoying. So we are still, unfortunately, still at that level where with Wear OS uh, that we do need to reset it. Yes, it does not transfer data. It needs every time I want to pair it to a new phone, um, it needs to be reset, and it's actually part of the setting. So it's not like a choice. Do I want to reset it? That's how I choose to do it. Uh, when I say pair to a new device, it resets it, and it just starts off as a fresh watch. The only thing, I mean, and I'm with you, it, it, it bugs the crap out of me because every time we do that, obviously, um, you know, you have to kind of start over. It's not as bad if you think about the fact that if you sync up your data to, let's say, I, I'm just saying if you're going, obviously, well, you are, you would be. If you're using a device that uses Android and you're keeping, you know, using, obviously, uh, Wear OS or Android Wear, um, your data should be already synced to the, uh, your activity trackers if it's not Mobvoi, uh, specifically for the Mobvoi watch, but for Samsung type of activities as well. If you're using Google Fit, your data is already synced up. So the, the next time you sync it up from the next device, in theory, and if you use Google Fit as your tracking data, you should still be able to get all your information accurately. Uh, it's when we start using, let's say, you know, Samsung stuff where you're using Samsung Health, and that should technically do the same because you technically have to download and install Samsung Health, the Samsung Wear app, um, and I think a whole bunch of other modules when you're installing it on a non-Samsung device because those are typically not installed on most devices. But yeah. Unfortunately, I, I'm wanting to see that function eliminated. There is no reason for us to have to do that. As long as we're logged in with the right accounts on the watch, pairing it to another phone should be as simple as pairing a, Bluetooth, a pair of Bluetooth uh, headphones from one device to the other. And that's one of the things I really like about Bluetooth headphones is that, you know, you know that you're going to connect them to, let's say, a PC, a phone or two phones, a tablet or maybe, you know, a laptop or something like that. It's going to work and it'll do really well. Um, I... <laughs> 
So this is kind of getting okay. So this chair is about three to four inches shorter than I, my typical chair. And um, the, the chair that I had before was my Gamdias uh, gaming chair. So it's substantially lower. Now, I know it's not like a lot for you guys, but the way I see myself in frame right now, I feel like I, I lost some height. And I feel like I just need to do this all day long and uh, just you know can't slouch, can't do anything, and can't enjoy that one. Just kidding. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, uh, if, and hopefully that answered the question there. Uh, Jimmy Fire Dragon, hey man, hope you're doing well. Um, nice, Greg. Oh, Greg's talking to back there. Sabaho, Dominic Wong. Hey, haven't seen you for some time, Dominic. Hope you're doing well. And um, uh, Jimmy, I watched the video and I thought about a comparison between the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pros and, uh, but the price difference is huge. So that's the other thing. It's, OnePlus has, has, has marketed this or has hit a price point that is crazy low. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we can find like 20 bucks and maybe 30 bucks pair of buds, but with a, uh, a low latency mode of down to basically about 94 milliseconds for gaming capabilities, the audio performance is actually pretty decent. Support for Dolby if your device supports it. Uh, the OnePlus Nord Buds are actually pretty comparable and very competitive considering that what you're able to get with them uh, for the price point. And the fact that they work with almost any ecosystem is the other big benefit. It doesn't have to be with a Nord. It can be with a regular OnePlus or other one, uh, smartphones, Android or iOS. I feel like that's where the competition comes in. Again, at 40 bucks, you can't really mess with them. Um, they're going to be available very soon, though, so more people will be able to pick them up. And I'm I'm really happy I got a chance to check them out. Uh, the design is not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing. It's a little bit bigger, but again, forty bucks. Um, you're you're not going to get the sleekness of the. Uh, so here's the other thing. So OnePlus also kind of uh, nicely. They sent me this nice pair of uh, custom. I mean, the, this is basically what they call them, right? the Radiant Silver. So the the OnePlus Buds Pro, the Pro Buds are in silver now, and they actually look really nice. Like from a custom, I know here, it's like, see this way you guys can see it. So it's really nice because if I try to do it this way, I have to pair, let's go ahead and log in. I'll go ahead and set up the, <laughs> the tablet uh, to log into the camera because I can't uh, focus or do auto focusing without uh, recording. It's a Sony thing, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and connect here. And I'll do that real quick for you guys. And um, hopefully you guys are doing well, by the way. I know it's been it's been an interesting, well, I mean, it's always an interesting week, really. There's always something going on. So let's go ahead and see if we can do this right. So here. And oh, now it does it, of course, without me touching it. So so these are the new OnePlus, uh, OnePlus Buds Pro in uh, basically silver. Uh, it's a very reflective, very dust prone, very dust, easy to pick up dust. Of course, now it doesn't want to do it. Oh, here it is. We're back. And uh, sorry about the dust, but essentially it's nice. It's really clean, uh, an interesting design, and definitely looks really cool. Let's bring it back. And uh, the casing itself it has a little bit more of a blue tone on the inside, but the casing looks really nice. So between this and the OnePlus Nord Buds, uh, I just feel like the name of the OnePlus Nord Buds was a little bit better. Uh, I had to put them back in the box because we pushed out the video on that one, and I'm actually working on a few more uh, on a new pair. But the OnePlus Nord Buds are definitely, again, a little bit more bigger on the container. Uh, they still look nice. They still have that nice control, touch control, not uh, not clicking, where the OnePlus Buds are more of a tactile button that you push. This was on a tap, uh, but we have double, uh, single, double, and triple tap on them. And uh, battery life, that actually is pretty crazy good, considering what you're able to do with them. Uh, but the but uh, the headphones that I'm talking about is the XM5 from Sony. I finally got mine yesterday, um, so I'm, I've been I've been listening to a lot of music since yesterday to today using them. And I'll say this: the first thing that happened is I didn't know they were this light. They were they were almost featherweight. Like, and I say this because um, I've had I've used generation from the XM3s, XM4s, and now with the XM5s, I've always noticed that there is a little bit of weight. I mean, they're not heavy headphones. They're not known for being heavy. Uh, but the XM5s, uh, XM5s are very, and I'm talking about the over-ear, not the in-ear. Obviously, the uh, Link Buds S are also announced or released this week. These are very nice, very comfortable, very lightweight, and still sound really good. Uh, very good performance on them. And uh, so I'm, I'm in I'm in the first couple of days of testing those guys out. Um, Hamid, Hamid, salam alaikum, sabah. <laughs> Welcome, good morning, good morning, Hamid. He's saying good morning, of course. Uh, let me see here. I think I missed a couple of questions. Uh, I did, okay, Dominic talking back. In there, uh, TK shrunk. I, I I feel that way a little bit, really. Um, so long story short, I mean, obviously, I need to adjust my camera angle, so the angle needs to be a little bit lower. Um, it's either that, or I figure out a way to make this chair go a little bit higher, and I'm trying. I'm I'm. 
if I do decide to stick with this one as my main chair, I'm going to try to Frankenstein something in between my gaming chair and my this my current setup. I just need to figure out how to get the uh, the uh, adjustment, the base of it from the other one. And I feel like that's what will give me a little bit more uh, height on this chair. It's a comfortable chair. It's nice. It's one of those uh, fabric materials, kind of like what the, the one that Juan has. And I've done a video on another one from FlexiSpot. This one is a different kind of brand. Um, oh, so Jimmy, yeah, same thing. Uh, so right now, very nice, very light. Um, definitely still same performance I'm expected before. The range is also very good. I was able to leave my phone, walk around the house literally, and I never once lost connection. Um, and then I think overall uh, touch sensitivity and the response on the on the uh, on the actual um, ear cups on the side on the outside. So you still have the ability of putting your ear your hand over, and it'll open up pass through mode. Um, call quality surprisingly much much better than the XM4s, and even way better than the XM3s. The XM3 has had a little bit of an issue with the call quality. So that one so far is pretty decent. Um, but audio performance so far is I'm still in the in the first couple of days of breaking them in. So yesterday I got the uh, the package. I did this. Uh, um, this There was this reel going on on Instagram, right? And it was this guy saying, um, so a lot of my people told me that, you know, uh, I, if I really want to make it big on, 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 on TikTok or something like that, I need to make short reels or something to the effect of that. But it's a very short audio and you, you barely can do anything in that audio without basically being cut off because the audio was so short. So long story short, I used it and I put that out yesterday. And that was literally when I got the box. So that I, I wanted to share something, uh, but I got home and unboxed them. So very pleased, very, um, I mean, it feels it feels comfortable and it feels like, you know, being at home. That's the best way to describe it. It's a Sony. It's a pair of Sony buds that I and it's very familiar. Again, if you've used the XM3 is the XM4 is over here. The XM5 is going to feel just about the same, just lighter, like actually lighter. So uh, but yeah, for sure, uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I decided to go with the white one this time as opposed to the black one. I know typically I go with the lighter, uh, the darker colors, but for some reason, I've been on this kick of I wanting uh, me wanting to try like even with the uh, with the link buds, I decided to go with the lighter color as opposed to the darker one. Um, so for me, it, it just gives a little bit more uh, a slightly change there, but they do they do look nice. They have a more of a cream uh, color, not necessarily very ultra white. Um, Dominic wants <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, yeah, I won't be able to uh, apply too quickly. TK <laughs> doing better. Okay, so here, uh, I think Jimmy Fire Jagan. Oops, sorry, I missed it. It's a question from TNC. Um, just uh, just gone out of, out of for the first time in a week after. Get, uh, oh man, I'm I'm sorry to hear that, man. I hope you're doing well. I'm I'm hoping you're over the 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 quarantine phase or you know staying at home. Um, so good to have the good a good walk today. Uh, absolutely, yeah. You know that was the biggest thing after we, not myself, but when when the family did have that a while back, we were pretty much you know quarantining even though i wasn't infected i just i had to still be in there to take care of the fam so it was pretty much there um i see marilyn hey man good morning um i hope you're doing well i didn't mean to say man but i said you know good morning welcome back um vinay uh, vinay hopefully i'm saying that one correctly uh tk would you recommend now to buy the pixel 6 pro mainly worried about the battery life so the, the Pixel 6 Pro is still technically what they have as, as the best device. And we're not going to see as something better than that until September, October, when the Pixel 7 Pro comes out. So from a sense of performance and what you're getting, yes, it's still a, definitely a very big recommendation if you like the the style of images and performance that you get from Pixels. And this is something that you have to be comfortable. If you're coming from a smartphone that is typically, let's say, a OnePlus or a, uh, or a Samsung or uh, you know a flavor version of, a, uh, of an Android device, and you're comfortable with that, you have to also understand that Pixels are very different in that sense. But what I would say this, the Pixel 6 Pro battery is pretty decent. It works very nice. And we keep getting updates. And it's getting better every time they provide us an update. So we're getting the security updates every month. We're not getting the you know four to five different updates that Samsung's pushing out this month for some reason on the S22 Ultra. But the short answer is I still would recommend it. Uh, my question would also, my only thing would probably be is this. Is your do you have a requirement for the telephoto lens? Do you need or do you rely on have or do you need to have a telephoto lens, a very a really good one? I'm not talking digital, I'm talking you know actual uh, telephoto lens. Because if that's not something that's very important for you, I may recommend going with the Pixel Six. The Pixel Six actually is definitely the better bang for the buck realistically. Uh, now the Six A is going to be still powered by the same processor, but the experience is definitely tailored to be around the 450 bucks. That's where it's going to be. So you have to understand there's going to be some compromises, materials changes, and so on. And this is where I feel like the Pixel 6 with the 6 Pro are a good recommendation. If you're not in a hurry, 
this is again why I feel like Google kind of made the announcement. They're giving us the target. It's going to be a couple of months or so, about four or five. Uh, I take that back. It's not four. It's about literally three to four months before we see the Pixel 7 Pro. So if you're able to wait, then that may be a better solution and make sure to jump on the pre orders once they open that up. Last year was crazy. Nobody could pick it up, uh, pick up the device. I mean, it was it was literally that hard to find a Pixel 6. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, Jimmy, I think it's fine. Hey, Earl Owens, good morning, man. Hope you're doing Sabaho. Hope you're doing well. Um, I like your review of the Sony Buds. I like those Buds. Those Buds, seriously, I, I mean, as I said in the beginning of the video, I really didn't know how to approach open back or open ear um, and open design for earbuds. I'm used to seeing earbuds to be pretty much always working on trying to give us that noise cancellation, that seal around the ears and that audio experience that you always knew that that's how you felt. Like, you know, pair of buds, this is pretty much what you expect. Even at the low end or the high end, you know the experience. And then Sony comes in there and just flips it on its back and just like, yeah, let me show you what to do. So when, when I started using them first, the first surprise for me was the fact of how well they sounded. Because again, I, I don't know why in my mind I was thinking that they would sound bad, but it was again, the design was something that I wasn't familiar with and I haven't used pair, uh, buds like that before. This is something, that's the other factor here. Then the fact of the matter that he sounded really well, bass was actually pretty decent. It really feels very much like having a pair of, um, uh, let's say a pair of speakers. Let's say if you have two spare, stereo speakers and you had them somewhere close proximity to your ears, that's the level of experience. And I did put in a little bit of an audio sample in that video. Um, and then later, the uh, the availability of pass through, the ability of listening to things without having them on. Also, if let's say I'm not listening to music and I decide to do something else, it still works and it works quite exactly the same way. So the, the the benefit of it is it felt like I didn't have any earbuds in. And if I wanted music, I can put them on. If I put them at a lower level, I still got that a really good experience, but not necessarily too much of a, you know, you, you overstep the process in there. So at the end of the day, I'm very happy that Sony has this type of a solution for us. I'm glad to see that what, we, what we're getting hopefully in the, with the Buds S is basically their traditional in-ear noise cancellation, light experience kind of moving on in more of a smaller form factor as opposed to the XM5s that we got that are over the ear. And again, still driving into that, you know, sound of ex excellence of uh, basically performance. Um, Jimmy Fire Dragon saying, my XM2s, uh, I can remember uh, being quite heavy and annoying, especially after a few hours. And that was the big, like I said, the first thing when you take them out of the case, you feel like, wow. Um, I'll be very frank with you guys. The last time I felt this, uh, this was with the Huawei Studio uh, Studio uh, uh, Buds, I want to say, or the, stu the Studio Earbuds. Not earbuds, uh, Studio Headphones. They felt like they were too light for what they were supposed to do. Like as if like they, were, they really took out a whole bunch of like, where is the battery kind of a thing? You know what I mean? This one still feels that way. Light, very easy to use. The controls are very, very responsive. And so far, like I said, audio quality for calls, very nice. For sure. Uh... <laughs> Ron Guido, the incredibly shrinking TK. And if we keep it going, let's see, can we can we do this effect? Oh, yeah. So uh, today we're going to be back on the show. Uh... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, um, definitely an adjustment for everybody, namely yours truly, because I got to figure out how to work with this. Oh, my God. It's, it is it's definitely here. Um, Davin David said, I love my XM3s. Absolutely. I still have my XM3s as well. Uh, the XM4s were definitely a very nice upgrade. I just didn't feel like from a 3 to 4 was a big one. Right now, going from the 3, just comparing the 3 to the four to the 5, I, it's, a, it's a big difference. Like I said, weight has been, there's a lot of weight that's been slashed out of this. And this is, I'm hoping that, it, again, um, I want to see how the battery life experience is going to be. And of course, charging. And I love the fact that we still have the ability of plugging in a headset into it, uh, which is something that's, again, unique. Not everybody does that anymore. Um, I think I missed something. Take care. Ta -da -ta. Jimmy Fire Dragon. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I think I'm in the right spot. Uh, so the only thing I hated about the XM2s was uh, fitting them uh, into a case. Uh, it was hard and annoying. Yeah. They, I think they fixed that with the XM3s. I think that was the biggest thing. The XM3s had the better fit because they, they I don't know if the XM2s included the case, but the threes did have a really good, decent case. And then uh, the bending arm actually was very nice. Uh, the new one is also very, very much on, on brand of um, recyclable material for packaging. You know what I mean? So this is something still kind of going on right there. Um, oh, here. Okay. So I doubt that the flagship Pixel 7 series will launch in India. And uh, my, uh, and, 
uh, my my friend leaving the U.S. in 15 days, so no other option other than the Pixel 6 Pro, uh, uh, for, basically for telephoto uh, for the with the telephoto lens and a good software uh, at that price. So yeah, if if that's the solution or the experience that you're going to be able to, I feel like yeah, the 6 Pro is definitely. Um, I feel like it's a good solution. And just for reference, uh, while your friend is still in the US, there are options that you can pick up uh, even better deals on the 6 Pro, maybe get a higher storage capacity um, if you want to pick them up secondhand. I'm not recommending, I'm just saying, you know, Swappa is a good place to pick up from. And you can actually save more money by getting higher storage since remember, we don't have the ability of expanding storage. For me, that was one of my point, my one of my concerns at the at the time when we first got it. Uh, it was just the 128, and then I filled that up real quick. So I always have to consistently make sure to back up this, the cloud. So it depends on what your solution is, or uh, at least your data cap is um, where you are. Um, TK, curious about uh, your thoughts on the seven Gen one chip. So. Qualcomm, right? Yesterday is, uh, I would call this like Christmas for, for Qualcomm. I've been waiting for the 7 Gen 1 to be announced since, and I'll be frank, I didn't know about all of this information back at the tech summit. They didn't actually talk to anybody about the 7 Gen 1. The only thing that we got at the uh, at the tech summit was access to the 7, sorry, the 8 Gen 1, and we had the ability of testing benchmarking those uh, back when we were in Hawaii. So the 7 Gen 1 got announced yesterday. The 8 plus gen one they chose to go with the plus in front of the eight as opposed to the eight gen one plus so the title the the two chips that we get are essentially going to be what carries us through the second half of 2022. this is how qualcomm has been doing it for the last couple of years they don't release the new seven series they let the seven series carry over from the year before till about midpoint of year in the year so first and foremost the seven gen one is a more powerful soc uh it's not uh, from what I understand when I asked about it, because obviously we know that the 7 Series have a lot of permeations, right? Last year we had the 778, 780, and then I think we had, there was still technically 765 still going around, although realistically those were the higher end of the 7 Series. So the 7 Gen 1 is supposed to embody the next generation of what like what the 8 Gen 1 was doing. Performance, from what I see, what I at least have heard is it's supposed to be, and let me get that, I, I do need to cheat cheat on this one because I don't have... Um, I don't, I don't have all of that information memorized. A lot of that information kind of came out. So I have myself a little bit of a, uh, man, let me see if we can get this thing right here. Okay. Da, da, da. Uh, here. And I think I have, I forgot. I think I, I did the, the, the summary on this one. Uh, okay. Uh, so essentially, the the be the main capture point here, here is better gaming, higher speed connectivity uh, with the better support for a better modem in there with the I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, 3.6 gigahertz, uh, the uh, the fast connect 6900, uh, and I'm not hold on, yeah that's the 71 larger uh, larger than life capture. They're able to support up to 200 megapixel cameras now on the on the 7 series 4K 60 frames per second, aptX um, lossless audio technology. Uh, anti-howling in there and audio and audio contextual uh, detection also for audio processing and then vault like security obviously with their security uh, process um okay so i can't find this specific one long story short i feel like this is the right soc for us to kind of get behind this year i'm not saying that the 8 gen 1 is not great i'm not even saying that the 8 plus gen 1 which i do want to talk a little bit too about that with a little bit of the benchmarking that's going on uh, right now, we want to talk about performance of what we can expect from the 8 Gen 1 and what we can expect for the 8, uh, 8 Plus Gen 1. Hold on, let me just get that one here. I want to talk to you guys real quick about... Ah, uh, nope, I keep clicking the wrong file. I saved them on my system here, but unfortunately, should I should have loaded all of this. I was setting up everything in the background uh, in uh, and on the other PC, and I didn't get a chance to. Here it is. Okay. So... Uh, and, and we'll open that guy up. Okay, so the overall performance on the 7 Gen 1. So the question was very simple. What do you think of the 7 Gen 1? I think it's going to be the, the biggest seller one, and I think it's going to be the more popular, uh, not popular by, by just popularity, but I'm saying basically based on performance uh, to price ratio. I think a lot of people will jump into those because that's what's going to be powering a lot of our mid-range. They, they did bring in some of the optimizations they did to the 8 Gen 1, the audio performance. They did better as well with uh, you know higher uh, clock speeds. Uh, we're still not going to be bumping into a Gen 1 thermals, so this is one of the other benefits that we get with the 7 Gen 1. Now, my concern would be, obviously, is how the, how companies actually implement it and how do they manage it. Um, we haven't seen it. Again, I haven't had access to a specific piece of hardware. And the benchmarks that were done on the 8 Plus Gen 1 were provided to us, so we didn't actually... 
I personally didn't do my performance testing. Last time when we were at uh, Hawaii, I actually had the opportunity to run my own benchmarks and get the numbers done. And I think that's how we were able to fact get that question coming out is how do you manage thermals? Is the 8 Gen 1 or 8 Plus Gen 1 about the same? So I'm excited to see what the 7 Gen 1 does. I want to see hardware with it. This is literally the best performer. Uh, well, sorry, the best way to judge how a chipset performs. Reference devices and benchmarks can only take us so far. It gives us an idea of where we want to be, but landing the actual performance will always end up becoming something that the OEMs end up doing for us. So something like a Samsung or something like a Motorola or even a OnePlus, maybe a Nord will come out with this as well. Now, Xiaomi did uh, pledge saying that they're going to be using the 8 Plus Gen 1, which a lot of people are dubbing uh, going to be on the Ultra, the Mi, uh, Mi 12 Ultra coming up. So I'm interested to see how that comes out. Sorry, let me just scroll up a little bit. I think I'm behind on a few comments. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Do you think any... Okay, so here. Jimmy Friedranger, do you think any other manufacturers other than... Uh, for, uh, other Apart from Garmin will do their version of the body battery... Uh, okay. The, the body battery feature. I actually did not pick up on that one. Um, the body battery feature. I, I got to look that on up. I'm sorry, uh, Jimmy. Unless you were asking somebody else, I think. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think you were communicating. Uh, Michael Corgan is saying is, um, I tend to prefer uh, IEMs um, these days. Uh, headphones are just so big. IEMs are also the other solution as well, uh, but it, they provide a certain level of um, isolation based on the fact that they're in ear, right? So the biggest thing for me, it, it's really more of a, a situational experience. The link buds work if in the situation that you need them to work in, they're not going to be an all around earbuds. They're not going to be the earbuds that you listen to, to your, uh, to, um, when you just want to basically be by yourself, isolate yourself, have that active noise cancellation, reduce all of those decibels and do all of that experience. There are obviously better solutions there. Um, headphones will do a lot of, uh, improvements over uh, noise cancellation. The XM fives are definitely very nice. But I feel like IEMs still give us that solution of being light, easy, um, better fit. And of course, you have uh, once driven correctly, you're able to get really good audio as well from them. So it depends on the solution that you're going for. I think the Link Buds have a purpose. They're great for work. They're great for parents. Um, and But they're also great for when people need to be more aware of what they're, what's going on around them. And it's easier to actually uh, kind of go around that as well. Um, sorry. Let's double check real quick. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of notifications for some reason. Yeah, so here. Um, okay, Dominic Juan jumping back, I think, with okay, Farhan. Um, it's ironic that the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 has a much better thermal efficiency than the 8 Gen 8 Plus Gen 1 and the 8 Gen 1. I think it's the architecture, and I think it's also about the how much power they're trying to draw for uh, from the system. It's the power to uh, performance ratio that I feel like the 8 Gen, the 7 Gen 1 is still it, it's shining because it's hitting that uh, that performance level that I feel like most people can live in very comfortably without really needing all of that extra horsepower on the higher level. I think that's the biggest thing that we always uh, um, we always forget what to what to actually keep in mind. The A Gen One is a great processor. The Eight Plus Gen One is even more powerful, less power consumption requirement from them. Although when the question was yeah, so I didn't get a chance to um, I didn't ask the question, but somebody else did. Are the thermals for the 8 Gen 8 Plus Gen 1 better? The answer that we got was very much the same that we got back in, uh, you know, in Hawaii was basically Qualcomm is providing the architecture and the setup on how to be able to manage the 8 Plus Gen 1. Now, this is going to be based on the TSMC. We all know, obviously, how the 8 Plus Gen 1 is going to be based. So there are going to be some differences, and I do want to see how the 8 Gen 1 and the 8, 8 Plus Gen 1 perform overall. Um, some people are also questioning, how does this compare to the, uh, you know, Dimensity 9000? Uh, one of the biggest things with the Dimensity 9000 processors, and I think, I don't know why I keep getting notifications like back and forth and back and back. Um, okay, so hopefully the phone will stop. And this is just, seriously, like a thousand, a thousand notification in one moment. I don't know why. Um, it's it's still something that you, you have to kind of understand. I, I, I think Qualcomm is focusing on giving us better performance. They did give us a little bit better uh, power draw on this one with the 8 Plus Gen 1. Will it translate to better thermals or would it be basically translating back to 8, 8, um, 888 type of thermals? We have to see what, how that kind of goes through. Um, when we kind of go down here, Jimmy Fire Dragon is jumping in. Yes, um, I was confused uh, that uh, it was it was it was a press release instead of an event. I kept re uh, researching for an event, et cetera. Yeah, so Qualcomm had a... Um, they had a uh, the 5G summit that happened a few days before, and I think that was earlier this, in the week. 
And I think during that time, some creators had access to some of their hardware to be able to, to, to talk to them. But I think it was primarily limited to the XR2. I saw Board at Work, uh, Edabong posted a, a reel on Instagram, and he showed the XR2, uh, uh, what they're calling basically the reference design XR2, the new wireless AR glasses. And um, th I think that's what most people got access to. So this was somewhere in San Diego, and I'm, I'm trying to... I'm trying to I, I, I'm trying to keep trying to stay connected. I'm trying to connect again and try to hopefully be able to uh, join some of the guys over there uh, next time. There's a little bit of a meetup. San Diego to me is about an hour, maybe two hours away. Sorry, two hours or so away. It's easy for me to jump in and uh, without even have to fly. I can just drive down and come back the same day. So it's definitely very interesting. Uh, Ibrahim, hey, man. Good morning. Sabah Good morning. Afternoon, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. I hope the weather is actually a little bit more, uh, a little bit better than it was for us a little bit cooler let's get a little bit of hydration um oh sorry so uh michael corgan saying i think samsung should uh, should use uh, a weaker chip in the flagship a gen one um is doing uh, melt the melt that thing so samsung's approach to this is very has been consistent throughout i think for for quite some time they underperform or underclock their processors, whichever processor they're using, they provide us a somewhat throttled experience out of the box to manage the thermals. I think that's their approach to what's going on. What's happening in, in the month of May and all of these updates that we keep getting for the uh, for the S22 Ultra, I am, I'm not sure. I am having problems with the battery and I think they're trying to fix it, but the problem is still persisting. So this is something that Samsung needs to keep working on. But as far as basically, you know, trying to use a lower chipset for the 7 Gen 1 and so on, the problem which what goes on with this is this. Um, Samsung goes in into a, a story, and I think most carriers and most OEMs do the same. The 8 Gen 1 is considered to be the flagship processor. So for them to sell flagships, they wouldn't be able to call it a flagship and put the 8 as 7 Gen 1 in it. So this is where it kind of changes the approach to it. So it's almost like saying... You know, um, you know, race cars can only have eight cylinder cars and higher and anything with lower cylinders is not considered a, a race car. And I think that's the standard that's been going on. What consumers have been finding with and been obviously through trial and error is that they don't necessarily have to buy the flagship. And that's why we see flagships not selling as much anymore um, as, as year over year and more people graduate, gradually, uh, you know, gravitating towards mid ranger and more budget friendly processors like the A series from Samsung. And again, going with the, I mean, this time they went with the Exynos, but again, last year they went with a Qualcomm chipset. And I think Qualcomm, uh, and then Google going in with tensor, trying to bring in an experience that at much more affordable, the four, four forty uh, type of dollars uh, there. And then, you know, even Apple does it now with their own mini and the S20, uh, the um, the SC2022. So there's going to be more options for us available. And I think more people buying with their pockets, don't get me wrong, they're still going to sell some of the flagships. I think it's at the end of the day, when you go into an, a carrier store, you go into Best Buy, you go online to buy a phone, your pocket's going to actually dictate a good part of what you're going to do. It's not always what your eyes want. It's always what the pocket can do. You know what I mean? Like never, never over... Uh, or, or oversell yourself. That's why there's window shopping sometimes. You'd like to see it, some of the nice things. But I think the 7 Gen 1 is going to be an absolute beast. And I think a lot of people are going to appreciate it more. So we just need to see more hardware. Uh, Qualcomm mentioned that they would, uh, we should start seeing hardware with the 7 Gen 1 coming out in Q2, uh, Q3. So we're done with May. I'm going to call May literally almost done. So within another month after that, we should be able to start seeing hardware, uh, maybe even earlier, depending on, uh, as you know, sometimes hardware gets released in China early. So like Xiaomi has one or something like that. It'll be interesting to see what we get there. Um, Jimmy, um, and then when I heard about the uh, the launch of the 8 Plus Gen 1, I kept correcting it uh, in my head to the 8 One Plus. Yeah, it, it, the name, I, to me, I would have thought the Plus should be at the end. It should not be the 8 Plus Gen 1. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I understand what they're trying to do. I... Uh, it's still technically the first generation of the 8 plus so like in the in previous years we used to have the 888 and the 888 plus because there was just a number and a moniker next to it so what they did here essentially is this is technically the 8 the um, C8 series right so if you think about them this is the 8 series and this is the 8 plus series not the 8 series so there's going to be a second generation let's say next year probably will be the gen 2 and then it'll be the a plus gen 2 as opposed to the 8 gen 2 plus you know what i mean so i I'm with you. Naming conventions. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it, this is all like ASUS all over again. You know, trrr, that's the computer number. No, uh, Qualcomm has a, has a model behind it, and I feel like the architecture just needs to basically regulate itself. And this is the first year we see the A series. This is a major rebranding uh, that Qualcomm's been going on with the with the Snapdragon lifestyle or Snapdragon Light uh, system. 
Um, is there an app that tests thermal throttling? Technically, I mean, yes and no. Benchmarking applications should be able to tell you if you're running at full potential or not. Um, because what they do not only is run the potential at the processor, but they also tell you what the actual clock speed of all the processors are. Uh, CPU-Z is also a pretty decent one that tells you what the system is running. And if you know, like let's say an example would be, uh, we know that the 8 Gen 1 is capable of going up to 3 gigahertz, 3.1 gigahertz technically on the Dimensity 9000. So if you put in CPU-Z and you notice that your clock speed is running in at 2.8, 2.7, you know the system is being throttled. Is there an app that specifically runs and then tells you your system is not running at 100%? that's going to be basically a more of a subjective thing. And I say this because part of how the system runs, it's governed by a kernel, obviously. So there's different levels to Android the way Android runs. And part of what tells the system on what to do and how to run, it's a, um, it's a layer of management called the kernel process, which allows the system to either overclock, underclock. And a lot of times that um, performance mode, sorry, that we have in Samsung, it literally is activating that function in the kernel, telling it, please run at this higher clock speed. But if the system by itself is regulated to run at that speed, an app wouldn't let you know if this thing is throttled or non-throttled, because to it, the system is reporting that it's running at normal uh, performance. So it looks if there is typically uh, multiple profiles. So like they say, an overclock and a standard or full power and less, and then maybe you can, but typically, I mean, the way I do it essentially is I use CPU-Z and I can tell right away, but we've also gotten, sorry, we've also gotten used to now seeing that Oppo, OnePlus, Samsung, um, even Realme, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they have the GT mode in there. Um, they put in the devices are basically released in throttled mode. And then when you flip it over and you start looking at what Motorola does, you notice that Motorola does just like, hey, dude, you want to do what you want? Just go do it. You know, Take care of everything you want. Samsung throttles. Sony says, hey, let's do what you want. We'll do what you want. It, and if it gets hot, we'll, we'll handle it there. Xiaomi also kind of works it the same way. So you, you kind of have to also see roughly what's going on. My personal experience right now with the 8 Gen 1, I've been recommending people, if you get an 8 Gen 1 device and you have a thermally, a throttled experience built in, stay to that one. Don't overclock. There's no reason to run at full. Even when you go into the gaming experience, running performance mode with the exception of having low latency for the audio set level, really doesn't give you that much more frame rate. It, the The experience is pretty much going to be very similar because I feel like balanced, uh, yeah, the balanced mode and performance mode are not going to really be that night and day situation where you're going to be like, well, yeah, I can go 165 miles. No, it's still very, very relative. And I think it's more of a mental... Uh, personal experience. You can go into a custom profile, even with the uh, with the, the Xperia One Mark IV. Customize the touch sensitivity to run at high. Keep the performance at medium, and then use AZ Power Control to give you that better that better balanced experience going across. So, um, we need to be a little bit more uh, aware and methodical about what we do with our devices. And I think that's the biggest part that we're getting to now. We have a lot of options, and not all of them are uh, are an autopilot. We need to be comfortable adjusting some of those things. And I realize I'm a little bit, um, oh no, I'm actually quite a bit late on my on my comment. Oh, dang it. Okay, so in this thing, obviously, <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see if I missed anything major uh, in there. Let me see. Da -da -da. Hey, uh, Matt's in the chat. I hope you're doing well, Matt. Thank you for, for stopping by. Happy early birthday. Monday morning will be uh, Matt's birthday. He's turning 65 and a half, right, Matt? Or, or is that 56? Or is that, tw wait, what, what are you turning? Um, but he's going to be running a, a cool, uh, like a chill stream, uh, watching, you know, playing uh, Call of Duty as usual. He is so much better than I am. Um, oh, 18. Oh, wow. 18. That's actually pretty nice and cool. I like that. We've been running a little bit cool, too, like about 70, 72, 72 yesterday and today, like almost 80. And that's closer to about, you know, 25, 27 uh, Fahrenheit, but uh, sorry, Celsius, but still pretty comfortable. Uh, better than what we had uh, way before there, of course. Um I think I may have missed this. Uh, okay, what are the clock speeds for the 7 series and the 8 series chips? That's a great question. So here, let me do this. Um, the 7 series, if I'm not mistaken, did they share the clock speeds? No, they did not share the clock speeds. It's interesting. It, obviously, it's running. Uh, oh, no, that's the GPU. Sorry, let me see here. Do I have the RF, the virtual systems? Do I have the clock speeds? You know, hold on. I, I think I had another chart that, um, oh, so real quick before we get too far. Um, from benchmarking uh, experience, when we're talking about the H8 Plus Gen 1, 
Uh, so just for point of reference, as I usually always show you guys, Geekbench, the Geekbench, there's the ST and the MT. The Geekbench ST, after they ran it about three times, the average after three times was 1320. So a decent bump from the 1210 that we've seen before. Not a massive jump. It's considered to be a, a decent jump. And the MT is about 4150 on it, which is actually pretty decent. Um, PC, I don't know if you guys care about PC Mark. PC Mark rocked in about, about 17,000. So that's going to be roughly what you can expect there. Um, GFX Bench uh, Manhattan 3.0 uh, ran at about 280 to 282 frames per second. It's actually really nice. Um, and then, of course, um, ML Perf. If you guys are, are con you love to run that. Now, this one, ML Perf, keep in mind that this is a 30 minute test. So it takes a long time to run, it doesn't always run. Um, image classification ran at about 2741. Object detection, about 1330. Um, and then uh, image segmentation, about 820. And of course, uh, language detection, 103, image uh, cl uh, classification offline, ran at about 4,262. And lastly, uh, the image uh, segmentation, about 681 um, on the brand new uh, 8 Gen 1. And then, of course, 8 Plus Gen 1. The N22 ran in about, um, what's it called, 2,904,042. So pretty pretty high um, overall. But let me jump back real quick on the. I think I I think I have that data. <laughs> I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, here, let's see if I can get that here. 8 Gen 1. Um, oh, I keep going to the wrong one. I love it. Saturday morning. Okay, here. Uh, did they share the clock speeds? No, that's again talking about the, uh, the camera performance. I don't know why I thought I had access to it. I, I I thought I had the information. Let me see if I can find that for you guys here. Da, da, da. Uh, I okay. I, I I don't think they shared the specific clock speed on them. Although I wished it was something that was, uh, I know that obviously there's going to be different ones. So from uh, for the 7 Gen 1, we're going to see devices coming in from Honor, Oppo, Xiaomi uh, coming up in, uh, oh, actually Q2. So they're recommending 7 Gen 1 will, will come out in Q2. And then as far as the 8 Gen 1 Plus, it's going to be coming in obviously from Honor, uh, ROG, Black Shark, Lenovo, Motorola, Nubia, OnePlus. OnePlus? Are we actually going to be getting a OnePlus Plus? Um no, I mean OnePlus 10 Pro Ultra. So maybe there is going to be an option in there. Uh, also, uh, OS, um, Oz Ozum? I've never heard those, uh, that company before. Realme, uh, Real Magic, uh, sorry, Red Magic, of course, that'll be the, the you know, edition. The Redmi, the Vivo, the Xiaomi, the ZT. Man, it was everybody. Uh, everybody and, and, and then some. So unfortunately, no, I don't have that. If I do, I'll try to post this on, on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, or over on Instagram. Sorry, Jimmy. I thought I did. I don't know why. Uh, Sam, man, hope you're doing well. Sam's in the chat. Uh, nice to see you again, man. Hope you're doing great. I'm going to try my best to be able to make it uh, over to his show with Joe tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, timing is a little bit tight for me a little bit. This weekend is kind of uh, a little bit weird. I have a few not embargoed videos, but essentially uh, videos that I need to kind of push out. And I've been really scrambling, scrambling to actually try to get those things uh, put out. And this weekend's a little bit hard. So, but yeah, tomorrow, hopefully I'll try to be there as well. Um, so Finn Jacob saying, what's your favorite Wear OS app? It's going to sound really cheesy. It's my Tesla app. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a te it's an app that I use to control my Tesla car, to be able to turn it on, turn it off, unlock it, um, and just do kind of a remote connection to it to, as opposed to using uh, my phone to be able to do it. And the good thing about it is I can even start the car. Let's say I'm not I'm somewhere away. I can start it from the watch. So um, one of those is one of my favorite there. Uh, I like the fact that we have now YouTube music that we can play music straight off of it as well. Uh, and of course, fitness applications. So uh, running applications and uh, anything that helps me, sorry, that helps me track fitness. Oh, wow, that was a bad one. Uh, track fitness as well. So here, uh, TNC saying, maybe the OnePlus 10T will, be, will have the new chipset. So last year they said they're no longer going to carry the T-Series in, in the US, but you're right. Maybe that will be the, the one that they bring over. Historically though, the T-Series has never been the one that runs the new SoC. So OnePlus typically doesn't run the latest and greatest. So we've ever seen um, very, I almost want to say the last time I saw the, them using the latest SoC was only on the McLaren edition of the OnePlus 7T7 7 Pro. And that was because they needed to be able to bring in uh, the 5G technology with the separate X50 modem at the time. So there is a quite possibility that we may see an ultra. This is something that maybe Qualcomm may have tipped uh, OnePlus's, uh, you know, uh, hat in a specific direction. Um, I, okay, I'll say this. I am aware of, hmm, how do I say this correctly? 
at at MWC, I was I was able to uh, through th through some chatter and something is kind of going on. I I heard that there potentially will be another device coming up later on in the year from OnePlus that is featuring some new technology. It did not mention at the time when I heard about it though that it was going to be the eight plus Gen one. I understood it to be always that Qualcomm sorry that OnePlus always uses the SOC whatever comes out early in the year. And even if they release a T series, it'll have some modifications and new features, but it'll always be somewhere in between the the standard and the pro model of what came up earlier in the year with slightly you know like i said it comes in the middle it's kind of like that wedge in between so we'll we'll see i don't know if they'll make the 8t if they do make the 10t pro a better phone than the 10 pro but we'll see we'll have to see how that comes out and typically the t series is not a pro it's just typically just a t if i'm not mistaken um okay hold on <laughs> Very same, same uh, uh, Sam, Greg, DK, sir. I hope you're doing well. Uh, ER Ibrahim is uh, jumping in. The 7 Gen 1 is a successor of last year's 780 and 778. Absolutely. It's not the 765. It's a successor to both of those. And it's taking over uh, right now with only one SKU or one model. When I asked if there was going to be variation, they did say they will. But at this point, they're only announcing the main system or the main series itself. So we'll have to see how that kind of comes up as well. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, uh, Farhan saying is uh, Vivo is also um, on the list. I assume that the X80 Pro Plus will happen. So this is where Juan and I were talking about a little bit as far as what we're looking at, what the X80 Pro is doing. So Juan also unveiled, uh, finally was able to talk about the uh, the X80 Pro Plus. I've been excited to, waiting for him to kind of do that, you know, put that content out. Um, his understanding is that the X80 Pro is the successor of the X70 Pro Plus that we saw last year. Now, yes, the X70 Pro Plus that is featuring the, 8, uh, the 888 Plus, so it's running the latest SoC from Qualcomm during the time it was released. So there is a very, very good possibility that that could happen. I'm not sure if maybe this is going to be another version of any of a Vivo because they also listed Aiku in there. So Aiku is getting it as well, not just Vivo. So you have to kind of keep it, you know, the other side of Vivo if you want to talk about. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll have to see. Honestly, I'm lately I've been on the hunt for a 70 X70 Pro Plus. I'm trying to see if I can pick one up uh, used a little bit. Unfortunately, Vivo because it's an import to the U.S. market, we don't have a lot of competition on pricing, and it's always even when it's used, it's still close to about a thousand dollars, which is the price of a new phone. So it's a lot of money for me to tie up on on a device that I like to keep for a long term. So I'm waiting a little bit longer and see. Hopefully, prices kind of drop down on the 70 Pro Plus now that the 80 Pro Plus is out. Uh, the 80 Pro is out. And then, of course, the 80 Pro Plus comes out. That that will be just icing on the cake because the X70 will be even more competitively priced, hopefully. Um, Sam, um, I don't have a, a cool app to start <laughs> my Mustang. They do make an app for the Mustang. It doesn't start the app, though, unfortunately. I think it just manages it, if I'm not mistaken. I think ever since 2017, I want to say it was the Ford Connect app, if I'm not mistaken, because um, I had it on my Ford um, Explorer. Uh, it it's a remote service. It's not super detailed and not a lot of control, but it was still decent uh, decent enough to tell me at least, I think, where my car was. I think that, that's what it was. Uh, but yours is a 2006, so yeah, for sure. Uh, he has an actual key. What's a key, man? What is a key? Is it a, is it a map? <laughs> um, I also read rumors that the OnePlus 10 Ultra, maybe that's the one, uh, will have the uh, overclock chipset. So yeah, um, this is the biggest thing. Like I said, this is where I'm, when once I saw OnePlus's name on that list, it's different than what OnePlus has been doing before, but this could be what the Ultra is supposed to be doing. The 10 Pro is a very solid performer. It still is a very good device, and I recommend it to anybody looking to pick up a OnePlus device for right now. The only thing that I'm probably say is I feel like the, 10, the 9 Pro from last year still give us a better deal because you get more RAM, more storage with it, where the 10 Pro is pretty much stuck to the 8128 right now in the U.S. market. There are other variants in China and I think other regions, but I think for us, Right now, if there is going to be an Ultra, and then the Ultra, it would assume obviously more storage, more capacity, uh, more storage and more RAM. I think maybe that may be the situation. The 10 Pro was the base and the 10 Ultra will be the better. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I feel like the 10 Ultra would be more of a, um, more realistic uh, from, from understanding and rumor reading than the T-Series for it to be better than the Pro. Typically it not, it, typically, like I said, it's the T-Series is uh, a, a midpoint, and they haven't been doing a, T, a 7T and a 7T Pro for quite some time. If you remember, that was the end of that year when they'd stopped doing the two series. The T ended up becoming one phone last year. They didn't even release one in the US, so we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, also, the the 
the press release does not actually specifically mention any the regions that they're going to be releasing in and well and one plus is actually across you know global at this point of course um er saying that the 7 gen 1 cpu plus oh yeah so the, okay so it's using the a710 at 2.4 gigahertz and the three a7 uh, a710s at 2.3 gigahertz 2.36 gigahertz and four at 510 yeah so i, I figured it wasn't going to be too hard for us to find the clock speeds the advertised clock speeds. so those are going to be primarily you know so it's considerably lower than what we saw and i think i heard it somewhere that the 8 plus gen 1 is going to be somewhere around the 3.2 gigahertz um on the uh on the, on the x2 core that we have in there so Definitely a, 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 big, a big gap, but they're both running very nice. And you can see here that they're using a very similar architecture that we've seen before with the 7 Series. Thank you, uh, Ibrahim, for that one. Um, Sam saying, I'll be fine with a phone that has the 7 Gen... Uh, the, okay, so an, an A7 Gen 1. I've never been uh, for a bleeding edge chipset. I think the reality at the end, it, it's not about bleeding edge. It's about what happens when you get the phone and how well is it supported. We want flagship support on the 7 Series as much as what we want the 7 Series to succeed. And I think this is where the big difference between the changes, between when you start looking at flagship and non-flagship, the pricing of a, of a chipset, the pricing of the functions that you get in there, and the support longevity needs to be as long for the 7 Series now than it, what it used to be just for the uh, for the 8 or the higher, or the 8 Series that we got from Qualcomm. And I feel like a lot of people are going to be carrying their devices more and more sales will happen in that 7 Series uh, than we've typically seen before. Again, it's better for the price, it's better on specs, and it's getting better on uh, on experience and bringing in more of the A series into the 7 series. And I think that's what I'm excited about the most. What other features can we get? Like lossless audio on the 7 series is going to be epic. And that's going to give us really good solutions. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of good options in there. And I want to see more from companies and how they're able to push themselves to give us a really good experience with a device that runs the 7 series. Um, uh, the one thing I will probably say that really kind of got me off guard was the XR2 series, uh, the XR2 reference. Um, XR or AR glasses or glasses that are AR based basically are something that gives us the ability of being connected and not connected at the same time. You're in an environment, but not necessarily in it. It's not total immersion. It's basically AR, augmented reality experience. And I, when I was at uh, Qualcomm's uh, main event back in, uh, in December, we had the opportunity to see uh, what they were doing with the X3, right? The the new gaming uh, ecosystem that's kind of like the Steam Deck. Coincidentally, uh, based on my conversation with Juan on Thursday, I put in my five bucks for uh, reserving my Steam Deck, and hopefully, I'll I'll get a chance to pick one up in October or maybe right before the holiday. But we'll see. Story for a different time. But I did put in my five bucks, so hopefully, we'll find out more. Um, so we had that new ecosystem with Qualcomm, but we didn't get a chance to see any new improvements on the XR, the augmented reality. The existing system was always tethered. And in 2019, I had an opportunity to play with some of their uh, some of their hardware. Um, now, we obviously do have, you know, Oculus that's been doing more independent, but that one requires a lot more horsepower done on device and everything is run on the unit itself. The XR2 system, the ecosystem that we're looking at, they're looking at something that very similar to glasses, the way I'm wearing them. Obviously, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider on the side for the battery. They're also leveraging a lot of the power from the device that it's connected to. It's not all connected on its own. So the, the hardware is a lot lighter, easier to use, much easier to handle. And what I loved about it, and when I got a chance to get a uh, ask a couple of questions there, is two things. A, there's going to be accessories, which means we're going to have ring uh, mouse control. It's kind of like what we saw with the uh, uh, the uh, Focal by North. Uh, the, and then, of course, uh, the other option that they also talked about was uh, extra battery power to extend the battery life. And um, they were talking about solutions and being able to basically, you know, connect to like a clip on option or you know, a wire to the back. But you can actually extend the battery life by using these type of accessories. And I love that they're focusing on expansion of the ecosystem, not keeping it all inclusive in one. So depending on the carriers or the OEMs that are going to be putting them together, you know, Lenovo, I think, if I'm not mistaken, have, has a system already, but it's a wired one. The other thing that I really liked about it is the fact that it's a 90 hertz uh, display. So it's glasses with a really nice refresh rate that you get a little bit faster than what we've typically seen before. So the XR2 as an ecosystem is very exciting. Um, it's definitely going to be, uh, I want to see how they're improving and moving forward and how much of that is actually going to translate over to what Google is doing. Again, this whole experience with the demo that we saw that, um, in uh, Google I.O. With, with their new, uh, either, I'm going to call it a glass focal by north kind of a, a, a mishmash going on together in that new ecosystem and then see what Qualcomm is able to provide um, on their setup. 
Uh, the image that I shared this morning on Instagram was of their reference device. So that's not what the hardware is going to look like. But this is typically what Qualcomm would like it to be in the in the general theme uh, of that, if that makes sense. So yeah. Hmm. Oh man, life. Uh, TK, which stream is which Steam Deck uh, model did you reserve? I so I went with the so here. Uh, sorry, Dominic is asking. Um, I ended up going with the five twelve. I think the 512 makes perfect sense for me. Uh, and realistically, not just the storage that comes with the case, there's a little bit of a bundle with it. Um, I did go, I'll, I'll start off by saying I went first to Swappa. <laughs> I don't know why. That's how my mind thinks. First, let me see if I can buy it uh, used or something. And then, of course, right now is scalping season. So what's going to happen with anything related to Steam Deck where it's very hard to get, it's not available on retail cash shelves is obviously everything that's on there is overpriced. So the the 256 model is selling for about $1,000 and plus. And for me, here here's my philosophy, okay? And, and Juan, if you're listening to this, uh, you, I think you kind of knew this was coming, but either way, uh, my thought process is this. I'm not in a hurry to pick up uh, this Steam Deck. Why? My buddy has it. If I really want to get a chance to play with it and see how it feels like, I just need to set up a lunch date with him and I can just go hang out and kick it and play the games and see exactly how it is. And if it's something that I really, truly feel very passionate about, I can definitely put my money where I need and I can try to maybe move some things in there. But right now, I feel like what Steam Deck is doing is delivering on their promise. A lot of people are very showing a lot of uh, promising comments. Juan's obviously very impressed with it. I'm very impressed with what he's going through. And I think that's the biggest thing right now. I have, I, I will probably enjoy it a little bit more when. It's a little bit quieter here, although I realized when I said October, it's probably not going to be quiet. It hasn't been. Uh, so we, we have more things, and there's a couple of things coming up, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. I'd love to be able to share with you guys as well. Um, so long story short, went with the 512. It's a better case. It comes with a case, better bundle. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Juan said the display has a better coating on it. Long story short, uh, hopefully, if I'm able to pick it up, yeah, I'd love to get the 512 because I feel like for the the library that I have, my games typically are much larger in format. So if I'm able to get Call of Duty, something like that at some point, yeah, that thing will nuke 256 in two seconds. I mean, and it's not something that I want to be able to put on external storage. I want it to run on the fastest possible internal capabilities. So for sure. Um, <laughs> a lot of, okay. Uh, okay. So while we're doing this here, hold on, let me see if I can find that one, th there's that one chart that I thought I had a general plus, no, those are, uh, is it here? I, th I thought I, I I may have put it in this one folder. Da, 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 da. No, it's not in this folder. Okay, so I can't find my my specific benchmarking uh, charts in there that uh, the numbers that I was actually putting in there. But um, some of the other things that have also kind of going on with me, at least lately, is I've been just heavily focused on both things, kind of work, day life, and 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 just trying to keep things kind of running. Um, I'm trying to get back into my normal uh, workflow and trying to get get back to working. Um, I have a friend that's do, helping me with editing videos. I haven't been able to actually help uh, use them, uh, use their help because I've been so like literally almost like last minute kind of producing content. I have a couple of videos that I'm going to be pushing out probably, if not tomorrow, probably maybe Monday morning um, on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. I have, uh, I've, I've already shot the videos. I just need to edit them and put them in a, in a, in a format. And that'll be on the Arabic on the English channel. Um, the biggest thing I'll probably say is this, the seven series is where I feel like most of us would be comfortable in there and would not even sweat having an eight series requirement. The eight series is very powerful and there is a, a, there is a reason for why they're there, but I feel like I think at the price point that we're looking at, I'm worried that when we come out with the eight plus gen one, that devices are going to be even more expensive. If one plus does release an ultra and again, the 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 pro is at eight ninety nine. Imagine of obviously maybe one to two hundred dollars more, and we're already at basically eleven hundred a thousand to eleven hundred dollars. That's something that we have to kind of and again pure speculation. This is not information from any company. Um, it's going to kind of come back and add. You know, the question would be is is it worth that much? Is it really worth that much more money for the A plus? Uh, or do you want to stick with the eight and get the uh, the one plus ten with a different storage and RAM conf configuration? Something to keep in mind. Um, the eight, uh, the the seven ten one. I think once we start seeing devices announced and we're really able to start getting hands on hardware, we'll start actually see see some of the main benefits. I think the ability of shooting with a two hundred megapixel camera on a seven on a seven series on a mid ranger device is nice. Although I think it's a it's a more of a theoretical stage because I don't think anybody would put a two hundred megapixel camera on this. I mean, one hundred and eight. I think right now is pushing it. Um, 
keep in mind, a, higher, a, a larger megapixel camera sensor on a phone is only as good as the post-processing or the processing power that this phone has and the processing algorithms that the company that's using this sensor will apply to this sensor. You can still technically take bad shots with something like that if HDR is not implemented correctly, you're not able to basically utilize the full potential. Um, and the fact that the matter is even at that level, they're still pixel binning down to about 12 to 16 megapixel camera images. So you have to also kind of appreciate where we're going there. I think what I would appreciate more is the efficiencies on the modem, efficiencies on processing, uh, maybe better uh, you know, clock speeds, and of course, processing power uh, overall, but not as much on power draw. So yes, I definitely want to see a device that's released with a 7 series and maybe referred to as a light edition of a gaming phone to start getting that experience. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Red Magic did release, I forgot what it was, one thing, was it was like the 6R. And that was supposed to be a, a more budget-friendly version of their gaming phone that was running, uh, again, that was sold at the, during the year of the 6 Series. So 7 Series, I haven't seen that yet, but we may see something like that later on uh, once they release the HN1, 8 Plus Gen 1 on the Red Magic. Uh, okay, so here, Farhan jumping back. Speaking of the Steam Deck, um, I'm not. it's not available for reservation in my country. Uh, getting one to Malaysia uh, will be a really tricky challenge. Yes, it, it's it's really very much uh, still, uh, again, it, it's part of the whole reason why there's such a high price for scalping. Uh, it's the fact that it's, A, not easy to get, not available everywhere. Um, and again, for me, all I did today was I put in a $5 deposit saying I'm interested in one. And they're, they hopefully will put one in my name for, you know, they said October 2022 or later. Obviously, I'm expecting it to be September, you know, October, maybe even November. Um, if it gets here before Christmas, then it's still nice. I'm hoping... I'm hoping it still holds up well. And by the time I get it, there's enough improvements done on the software that my experience would be definitely a lot better than maybe the first people, first few people that did get a hands on and they maybe had some concerns. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the best way to kind of look at it. I'm, I'm like skipping over all of the software updates that typically will get things to you know, perform better as time goes on. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Dominic jumping back, uh, TK, perhaps we should skip the A Gen 1 and the A Gen 1 Plus and wait for the A Gen 2 instead when Qualcomm fully uh, fully moves over to TSMC. So I think it's a I think the approach that you're going with is a um, it's a good thought to be able to consider maybe skipping in and going there. What I probably will see is I want to see the shift. I want to see exactly how does the TSM, because remember, we're talking 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1, and we're talking about a shift. There is one of the big thing, the big things that they, they they pushed for us in the announcement was better performance, less power perform, less power to performance uh, draw. So in theory, this should still provide us a better experience than what we get with the 8 Gen 1. Is it, uh, is it going to translate exactly to that on paper or on hardware? That's going to be challenged because again, every device is made differently. Every device is made by a different company and it's uh, and it's managed differently. So we have to also see what the companies are going to do. I feel like the Agent Two hopefully will be better, but I don't feel like Qualcomm is going in with we're going to be reducing power. I think the the approach that Qualcomm is going with is look. We're going to give you the power. We're going to give you the, the 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 processing power, the horsepower, the engine, all of the things that you want to do the Lamborghini style performance. It's up to you on how to manage that Lambo and how to manage the cooling system so that the Lambo can perform at the level that you want it. OnePlus, OnePlus does a very decent experience monitoring where they throttle the experience and they, and they almost like purposely cap you at 60 frames per second gaming so that you get a very consistent gaming experience, but again, still not exactly at 120 or maybe even higher, depending on the games that you're playing. So we have to see how that comes. I I'm, I would love to be able to say it's an easy slam dunk. Right now, we don't have any devices available. I think ASUS may have had a reference device somewhere. Some people were testing and I saw some articles on that. But the reality of the matter is reference devices are not real devices. They're reference devices. The term reference basically says this is a uh, this is what we would like it to be. And reality is one thing. Um, the differences between what I saw with the reference device on the A Gen 1 and the reality of the A Gen 1 has been a vast uh, margin of, of change between how, you know, uh, one company handles it, you know, unfettered, take care of everything, have fun, go play to the other areas where they're like, no, we're going to help you get a better experience because we feel like this is the best way to get it um, in your hand and get you to enjoy this experience. Um, but with our input into it. So there's that whole back and forth. So I'm with you. I'm with you. It's always going to be interesting to see. 
Um, I think that there was a six S and the six uh, and the six pro. Uh, yes, and I, I I take that back. I think it was an S, not an R. My mistake. Uh, it, but I do remember them releasing a phone that was supposed to be a more of a budget friendly version. Uh, Farhan jumping back within. I can definitely agree with the photo processing, uh, the fo the post processing. That's why I'm still uh, using my Microsoft Lumia 950 in the mobile uh, photography. I can't. Um, I still can't find one that truly uh, surpasses its processing, and it's going to be something that. I, I think this is the biggest thing. Realistically, we've gone to the point now that smartphones are are viewed as as, and I, I forgot who, who who put that comment, but I totally agree, and I can't remember their name. Somebody said that we need to stop referring to our phones as smartphones or phones or telephones because at the end of the day, realistically, they're no longer just that. This is not just a phone. I don't you okay. I, I rarely ever make calls on this, but if I do make calls, that's about the one thing that makes it into a phone. This is a media hub. It truly is a media hub. It's a content creation and media hub that happens to have phone functionality. We have moved beyond that. The, the, the end of the iPad is because we no longer needed media players only. We want media players and the functionality to be able to send or receive text messages, iMessage, and so on. Insert all of the you know Apple ecosystem stuff. But it's the same thing on Android, right? At its core, this is a storage capacity with a processor, a GPU, uh, a camera module to be able to give us some, uh, you know, access to the uh, the external world, and of course, being able to be part of it. Uh, we have security in form of fingerprint sensor, camera security with front-facing camera experience, depending on the device that you're picking up, stereo speakers to be able to enjoy content, a large display, high refresh rate, really high OLED panels. At the end of the day, these are no longer just phones. The word smartphone. I think has been surpassed. These are, these are media hubs. So I don't know. I mean, I, when I saw the comment, it clicked in my mind. I'm like, it makes sense, right? The phone functionality is such a low priority. Rarely ever do we see a reviewer saying, well, this phone sucks at making calls. Like I can't make a call. Like it will never even pick up a signal. And this is that. No, it rarely ever comes up there. Um, and, you know, and in, in reality, the matter is now, now reviewers are like picking on, you know, what's not in the box and, and things kind of going on. And, and in reality, at the end of the day, look, these are media. It's a media hub. And depending on what level of media experience is what you're going in. So the price, the chipset, the performance is always going to be in there. So I'm, I'm with you on that one for sure. Uh, hold on. I think I just saw somebody. Da, da, da. Oh, Jay Jetter. Hey, man. Hope you're doing well. Hey, what's up, uh, Brother TK? Hope you're doing well. We're we're doing really good. It's it's Saturday. We're here in uh, the Android Bay episode 119 doing really nice. Um, here. Okay. So uh, ER jumping back. Um, that's unfortunate and frustrating, uh, Dominic. Okay. So I think he's responding back to Dominic and, um, and Farhan as well. Uh, here, or Dominic jumping back in. TK, have you uh, watched the Dave to D video? The eight the 8 plus gen 1 performs pretty well it is this is the biggest thing about it um it actually is a better processor and it's not just ai processing last year with the 888 and 888 plus it was mostly focused on ai processing it wasn't really th true horsepower performance this one is trying to be 30 percent faster and draw less power from it again the, the one thing you want to keep in mind okay We've gone through two generations of heat generating processors or warm processors that can get pretty hot or warm. So even though it's technically lower, you have to understand that it's higher and lower than where it was at the 865. So the 865 went in there. We have the 888, and then we have the 8 Gen 1. The 8 Gen 1 Plus is 30% less than the 8 Gen 1. Uh, the Plus is, but it's not going down but from, from the 888, from the 8 Gen 1 down to the 865 level. It's still playing around the 888 and higher. So it's a combination of two things. And like I said, it's really more about how OEMs handle it. Um, and I don't disagree. I actually do think the 8 Gen 1, the 8, uh, 8 Plus Gen 1 is going to be a better processor. And if I have to, once we get a chance to play around with it and see how hardware is performing, yeah, there may be some benefits. I, I just want to see tangible benefits. Truly something that I can put my finger on and say, look, this is really why the 8 Plus is better than the eight, the regular 8. And I think that's where we're going to get there. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Dave's whole video. I did I catch part of it, um, but I think we'll, we'll try to go back and catch uh, the whole thing as well. Um, I love uh, Dave 2 dds style of approach to talking. It's very chill, very easy, and just basically gets to the point. And I love the storytelling that he has in there as well. Davin Davis, uh, the, the 6R uh, was more uh, grown up looking at more appealing to wider audiences. Uh, I love that one, man. I love that. Uh, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> see some people. TK, I was thinking of smartphones. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think smartphones replaced the point and shoot camera. So for the most part, yeah. If you think about it, um, I mean, Sony still makes the, uh, you know, the ZV-1, the ZV, uh, the ZE-10 and kind of, kind of a thing. But yeah, the RX line kind of went out the door, right? Um, most point and shoot that used to be, like, I remember, oh man. Uh, so I, I, I want to say I found some put from some footage uh, through Google Photos and so on of, I used to have an, a Canon point and shoot. I remember traveling with my wife with a Canon point and shoot because that's how we captured our images uh, back like in 2008, obviously, you know, that's like a lifetime ago. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, smartphones have replaced it. When we buy phones now, we buy them with the understanding of how well are their pictures. Do they take great pictures? This is a question now. That when I, my mom, when I when I talk my mom or, and my my in laws uh, about phones, they're asking me, does it take great pictures? It's a requirement for them because we no longer want that. You know, carries two different things. You just want to have a good experience, fast enough, and great images. And I think once you do that, and once you show people what a pixel can do, you're like, okay, I like it. How do I get it? That That's the type of thing I, I love about that one. Sorry about that there. Okay. Oops, I just jumped like 6,000 messages again. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, Jimmy Fire Dragon, uh, even life... Uh, oh, you know, actually, Ron, Ron, Ron Guido, I think it's a, it's, that's also a nice idea. It's called a life hub. Because at the end of the day, we have so much stuff on this. I mean, this is crazy, but it is one of those things that, yeah, it is your life is on these things. You know, your memories, your experiences, your 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 tools that you use to manage things in life and your tools that you use uh, to connect with people in life. We're talking through technology. There are, I'm sure, some of you guys that may be watching me directly on a phone. And again, that's the way we communicate. Um, now, I choose to have something slightly different when I'm talking here because I produce content as well as I obviously, you know, shoot, uh, you know, uh, stream and so on. Um, but at the end of the day, when we're looking at devices like these, these are truly hubs. And we are starting as consumers to be smarter and asking more things of it. This is why when, when new devices are launched, there is a big portion of that uh, launch event talking about how the cameras work. It has nothing to do with phone calls. So smartphone, I think the term needs to start slightly fading away because we've moved on beyond what this is. This is no longer a phone. This is this is just literally, um, you know, it's it's a hub. It's like you said, yeah, it's a, it's our media hub, for sure. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, here, okay. So let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, no, no, uh, <laughs> a lot of things kind of going on there. Oh, yes, yeah, Jimmy Fire Dragon jumping in. Um, I was listening to the Android Central podcast, and they were saying that the new 7 Series chip is heavily, uh, sorry, is heavily rumored to be uh, on the Nothing One. Oh, okay, so that would be interesting if nothing decides to go with that. Uh, but it's something that is that, um, so the nothing conversation is a is a little bit still cloak and dagger i'm not dagger but a little bit in you know secretive and sign kind of things going on uh, we know that they're looking at probably bringing in the keyboard factor back in there we're also looking to possibly you know trying to reinvent and try to do different things okay sorry guys i need to respond to this real quick, quick text um Okay, um, so the ability for them to go in with a mid-range processor that could potentially make it more, even more appealing and why they're trying to re revolutionize the, uh, the ecosystem. My concern would be is how do they sell that as a revolutionary experience when most people's expectation when you hear the word S7 Gen 1 is mid-ranger? So this is the, again, this is the, the the elements or the components of what a car could be. Again, if we're saying eight, eight cylinders and higher are speed cars and we're trying to revolutionize the system, it's hard to try to sell it with that experience of saying this is a mid-ranger. So um, I would like them to show us maybe an option with the 7 Gen 1, but I feel like at the end of the day, if they're going to go Qualcomm, which more than likely they will, um, I would prefer them to go with either an 870 or an, uh, some kind of a flagship experience processor uh, as well as maybe potentially given us a 7 Series or maybe go with an 8 Gen 1 or an 888. We'll have to kind of see exactly. I mean, they're promising some information in July. That's not that long from now. But the reality of the matter is the longer they wait, and I think this is what happened with the, remember, with the Essential One, the way the, the Essential One phone was done, it took some time for them before we were able to figure it. Oh. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. I just realized what what happened there. Um, okay, sorry, my wife's texting me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, we need to kind of see what's going on realistically with um, the the financial, and not the financial, but like how much are they going to cost? How much they're going to be able to really disrupt the system if they're releasing a mid range or processor? It's going to take some kind of a, a approach there. I'm, I'm worried if if they would release it with that and still trying to make it into the the, the driving force and all the all, everybody kind of jumping in with it. I, I'm 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 yeah. It's it's all speculation right now, so it's hard for me to kind of make a straight uh, you know um, a straight call for it. But I would probably say at the end of the day, if you looked at it realistically, for what they're promising, for what the level of hype level that's the best way the hype level that they're building up to, seven Gen one wouldn't fit the bill. It would be great as an as an extra, but not the actual whole bill. So I, I don't know if that would be the nice way for them to go in. Uh, Hey, Aditya, hope you're doing well, man. Um, I can't wait uh, for the 8 Gen 1 Plus. Uh, sorry, the 8 Gen 1 Plus 1. The 8 Gen Plus 1. Oh, my God. Aditya is just, uh, just definitely uh, as, uh, <laughs> destroying the titles. Yeah, no. Um, the naming convention can definitely be a little bit better, but I understand why it's the 8 Plus, not the 8 Gen 1 Plus. Uh, again, it's it's a new nom it's it's a new moniker. You got to remember it. they they've revamped the whole thing with the eight 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 Gen one. So this is obviously their way of setting up. Look, we're still going to create higher performance versions of our processors. Again, keep in mind this one is clearly stating a thirty percent uh, bump in performance with power draw. So we are going to definitely be able to see a substantial performance benefits here. So we'll have to see how that goes as well. Um, oh, uh, Aditya is saying, 15 years ago, someone claiming to talk to people through their TVs would probably have uh, have been considered a sign of mental illness. Uh, nowadays, streaming has become a very <laughs> viable career. <laughs> I, I know. We're doing it. I know. I know. It, it's, it's a crazy thing of saying um, where we were 10 years ago, where we were 11 years ago is definitely very big. Um, sorry. Let me see here. Uh, Got to respond to my wife and make sure she's cool. Uh, yeah, for, for, for sure. I'm with you there. Dominic, jumping in at TK. Uh, I just realized you are wearing Goku and Vegeta on your T-shirt. Always, man. Always. And then, of course, Super Saiyan Blue on both uh, here. You get both Super Saiyan Blue. So I, I'm always... This is, the this is again, one of the things where I'm like a little bit lower. And, uh, you know, I got to put my big boy pants or something. I don't know. Um, like, hey, here you go. We're here. We're good. We got it. We got to do it right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Let's let's we'll do that there. Okay. So let me jump back here and here. Da, da, da. <laughs> Release. Um, I was I, I was about to uh, everything okay? TK seems like something is wrong. No, um, no, no. Everything's fine. Um, family is family went out but my wife forgot her card here so i need to as soon as we're done with the show i need to go drop off um their you know her atm card so it's not a big thing uh i just uh, couldn't answer the call when she was calling me because obviously we're we're on the show um if the nothing phone comes up with the snapdragon a7 gen 1 they uh, they will need the price the same as the pixel 6a in my opinion i feel like don't get me wrong if they do that obviously will be the experience that i'm expecting i i, I we have seen uh, seven series go into the six hundred into the seven hundred dollars, depending on the manufacturer that you're looking into. But yeah, for for nothing to make the the that impact that they're trying to shoot for that that real um, you know movement of revolutionary trying to do these things that we're expecting from you know from Carl Pay that needs to be a big factor. The price point has to be a big factor, making it appealing. There, you can't go in there with that high price now. They could go with the OnePlus methodology of the way they used to do it. OnePlus started with a low price and then every year creeping up the price ever so slightly to now becoming the standard de facto pricing of what we get. So we'll have to see how that kind of goes. I think at the end of the day, where we are right now, it's still speculation and a lot of what we would like to see the uh, the nothing phone become. I'm hoping, again, that with all of the investment and everybody on board, that they have a really good out of the out of the gate kind of an approach because expectations are high 
expectations are not only high enough because of speculation, but it's also because Carl Pei went over and they had an event and trying to get more funding to try to get more people to help them reach that goal. So the the one thing that I would probably say is nothing has a lot of expectations and they need to at least meet or exceed that. Otherwise, it's going to be a very hard conversation. It's going to be very hard to convince investors if that initial out of the gate is not promising and not moving in the right direction. This is where I'm worried and I'm a little bit wondering is really would the 8 Gen 1, sorry, would the 7 Gen 1 be the right footing to start on? That would be where we are. Uh, okay, well, actually, I didn't have one here. Uh, yeah, no, no, I think I think everything else is okay, guys. I double checked and uh, overall, I think all, all it is. Yeah. So uh, what happened apparently is my wife forgot her card and Samsung Pay for some reason decided to take a, a dive, a nose dive on her Note 20 Ultra. So uh, this is why I need to go drop it off. So uh, I think we're also kind of at that point where at that sweet spot point, as usual, you guys know, it's about an hour and 20 minutes into the show. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and keep reading some of the comments, but let's go ahead and uh, if you guys don't mind. Uh, the hashtag TKception, as you guys know, it's part of the show. We do it every week. Um, we kind of, you know, trying to highlight and, and showcase some of our friends hanging out with us here. Uh, but as we're doing that, um, I think uh, Ibrahim says, if nothing phone comes with the Snapdragon 1. Oh, yeah. So I think that's the comment we were looking at before. Good morning. Oh, hey. Um, um, I think I'm saying uh, Cor Corlean. <laughs> Corleone. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think I'm, I'm getting a Beavis and Butthead uh, uh, flashback a little bit. Uh, glad to hear everything. Else. Yeah, I was a bit worried. Yeah, no, um, it's more uh, they're out. <laughs> and um, so the thing is, I have my car. So they uh, they were driven, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that's where, where we need to kind of get it there. So the reality of the matter at the end of the day, when we're starting to look at things, at least right now, I can say that Qualcomm is focusing on moving forward. They are more focused on uh, and they're still focusing on trying to give us better optimization. So the performance, the power ratio, and the power draw concern, concern I, is definitely a better story with the 8 Plus Gen 1. I want to see how that performs into longer longer gaming sessions, uh, longer gaming experiences, and on different flavors of these devices. Because you have to remember, again, OnePlus and Oppo and Xiaomi and, and Realme and um, Samsung and Motorola and everybody manage devices very differently. They give us a very different experience based on what they feel like is their their um, their flavor of uh, of Android is going to be best perceived or accepted. Qualcomm, oh sorry, uh, Google is doubling down on Tensor. They're bringing it down to their mid rangers, and they're going to be focusing on bringing the next generation with the seven series. So, although I love what the eight Gen one is bringing us, the eight Gen the eight plus Gen one seems to be the one that we should have been getting earlier in the year with the better performance. See, I would have loved to have that power draw performance, uh, the lower performance on the eight Gen one, not the eight Gen one plus, nor the eight plus Gen one, because as I said, where everybody was saying is like, yeah, even though the power draw is less, you have to remember you're already two steps above where you were two years ago, where the 865 and the 870 are giving us. So 30% less is still not that much further to bring you down back to eight to the the era of where we were more comfortable in. So this is really going to be something that we have to keep in mind and keep an eye out for when hardware starts showing up and what people are actually able to reference and start talking about, especially when we talk about you know uh, performance, battery draw, and overall kind of thing. Um, and and if OnePlus is releasing the Ultra, I believe me, I will be all over that because I would love to see what OnePlus does. Their their approach to smartphones have been solid. Uh, their their work with Oppo as far as the Color OS 12 uh, Color OS uh, software optimizations have definitely improved and helped uh, OnePlus's ecosystem. And I definitely want to see more of what's going on there as well. Okay. So with that being said. Uh, let me go ahead and just do this real quick. Uh, this is that time of the day or that time of the show where we have our TKception. Uh, this is uh, basically one of our uh, kind of like a thing that happened a few, about a year or so, maybe a little bit earlier, and it kind of stuck. It's a way for us to celebrate and showcase all of our friends here on the show kicking it with us. So with that being said, I'm going to start it off with uh, Barry Johnson kicking it with us here. Let me share my screen. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, here we are. We're going to do one, two, three. And a little bit of a delay, but I'll take it. Um, so thank you very much to Barry for kicking it with us on this beautiful Saturday uh, again uh, on the on the Android Bay. Uh, thanks to Greg Aditya kicking it with us, uh, and of course Finn Jacobs uh, always kicking it with us. Love it, hey, Richard. I haven't seen you for some time, man. Hope you're doing well. 
Uh, E.R. Ibrahim, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Davin Davis, as always, uh, TK Seption, TK Alpha Rom, and Saturday Streams, and Sony Juan. Of course, I, I miss hanging out with... Uh, honestly, um, that day when we got a chance to hang out, we weren't really hanging out as much. It was really more work than hang out. And I haven't had a chance to hang out with him. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to setting up some, maybe an in-person um, best of our week, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so. I'll keep you guys posted, of course. Uh, Ibrahim, of course, TK Seption, TK Wife waiting for the <laughs> uh, No, it, 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 it is. Yeah, I know. And then I wish there was a way for me to fix it without having to physically go drop off something. Um, TK Seption, TK Arbay, TK Qualcomm Bay, TK Encourages Proper Tech uh, Discourse Bay. Absolutely. Always. We need to be able to have better conversations. We need to be able to endure, uh, and not, not just have our opinion, but be able to either defend it or be open to actually maybe seeing if there are other options on the market. It's not always a, a black and white kind of a thing. It's yes or no. There's maybe a lot. That gray area is just massive. Um, and it sounds uh, like a, you know there's, a, there's not enough people talking about it. They always make it sound like it's a harsh yay or nay. Not always, not always. And um, and I really, really miss the Xperia 1 Mark IV. I'm really, really sad that that time with that kind of ended. Um, so definitely thank you very much, TK Seption, uh, Jimmy Fire Dragon. Um, of course, TK <laughs> Loving Husband Bay, appreciate it. DTI, our Benedict, our Mr. Cumberbatch of the show, as I always love to say that. Dominic Wong, thank you again. Thank you for hanging out with us, kicking it with us as well. Uh, everybody else uh, having, hopefully enjoying their Saturdays, the rest of their Saturdays, if you're having a good time. Um, I know oh, uh, I didn't get a chance to mention a lot of that. Huawei did have an event in Milan. Unfortunately, I was not able to make it. I was invited, I'll say that. Uh, but due to scheduling and, uh, and uh, logistics, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make that event. Uh, hopefully, uh, next one will be able to. Uh, but I saw some really interesting things. The Mate X, uh, S2 uh, is definitely looking very nice with the Falcon Wing. Uh, the uh, the Watch D, I posted about that one. I saw that at MWC, and I was like, they said it was going to come out later, but I didn't realize how later it was, but it, it's out now. And of course, the, GT, uh, the Huawei Watch GT3 uh, Pro. That silver one looks really nice. So uh, keep it with us here. Like and subscribe, of course, if you haven't had a chance to uh, you know, share this with your friends. I'll be back, obviously, next Saturday for another episode of the Android Bay. On Monday, we'll be all together with the SGGQA. And, and of course, Thursday with the best of our week. Um, tomorrow on uh, Sam and uh, and Joe's show, I'll definitely be trying to... In, probably, I think it's uh, later in the middle, middle of the day, but more like evening uh, time uh, for the UK folks. So I'm not sure about the timing, but hopefully we'll talk, we'll chat, we'll have some time. I haven't seen Sam for some time. And of course, Joe would be fun to have a quick chat with them as well. Take care, be safe and stay safe. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye for now.